and good day and welcome back Adventure Racing Friends. I'm Heidi Miller for AR World Series and today I am speaking to Gustavo Borgonion, Race Director of Expedition Gurani in Paraguay. Hola, como estas? Hola Heidi, eh, muy bien, muchas gracias por la invitación. Thank you very much for, for the invitation and for the opportunity to speak about our country and our race. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you um, for putting on wonderful races and just making the Aero World Series, you know, put us on such a global platform where people can go and to do all these adventures in the world. So how are you? Is everything okay? How's life treating you in Paraguay? Yeah, we are we are okay and uh, a little bored because of <laughs> this coronavirus thing. But we are we are okay and we are living. We are having a like an intelligent quarantine. So we are we are living the quarantine, okay. but very slowly yet, and waiting for the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like all of us. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, to our friends at home, adventure races. Um, as you would know, Gustavo was supposed to have the world champs this year. And with all the things that happened, um, we had to move his race to 2022. So we are very excited when we got the news that he's willing to put on a race next year in 2021 in July. You will have another race in uh, Paraguay. So we are very excited to tell you more today of his race. And that is why we have the chat. So hopefully in the future, we will chat more about the world championships. But for now, we're just excited that there's another race in South America on the calendar. It gives you more options to go and venture into the world next year. So, uh, Gustavo, please, before we speak about your race, let's just tell our friends um, all over the world, who is this man who's sitting in front of me? Uh, we have quite a journey, uh, a personal journey together, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But our paths met actually in uh, uh, 2012. But um, please tell us, who are you? Where are you coming from? Your family? And, and why do you love adventure racing? Well, I am 48 years old and I'm married. I have three, three, three children and the, the oldest is 20 years old. Wow. It's a boy. The second one is, is a boy also with 18, 18. And the third is a girl with 12 years old. Oh. Um, I, I have a, like a little bank for very small uh, loans and huh? I have the, the luck that I can I have people there working for me you know <laughs> so I, I can I can race I can travel so that's how I I, I start at the race the the adventure race series you know because I start racing in 2001 because I have an injury in 96 playing rugby. Okay. And I, I, for, for four or five years, I, I was not able to do any sports. Okay. As, but adventure races was like, like a, a new start for me. I wanted to, to discover new places, is run in, in the nature, you know, in the wild. So that's why that's how I start in in 2001 Paraguay start uh, adventure races, but really really small uh, races with I don't know maybe 10 hours 12 hours of and was was just a a, 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 be, a beginning you know and then I like I grew up like a. a and racing, I, I were, I, I was, I raced my first adventure race in, in, in Patagonia in 2010. It was an expedition race, really, with 
five or six days. And that's how I fall in love with expedition races. But my really first uh, serious expedition race was in, in, in Africa, in South Africa in 2012 with you. That's how we met. <laughs> so that's a good thing. I mean, that's why you're here today. Wow, I remember that, I know. You guys had a great experience. It was only our second, Expedition Africa's second race. And look now, now we both are still here. What a blessing. You have only 13 teams that time. Yes, it was, it was a very hard race for us. Um, and, <laughs> and imagine for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very happy that you came. You were one of the 13. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I think we were the, the only foreign team. I, yeah. I don't remember that, but maybe. I too, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Oh, well, and it started for you there. You, you got encouragement then to say that you want to be a race director? Yes. Maybe not a race director, but I wanted to see a, a, World, a World Series race in Paraguay, you know, that's, that's what, that's what my, my, my goal. So I speak with Luis then in the, in the last meal that we have there. And they, she told me how, how it will be possible. And so I start working. I, I start thinking, how can I do it? I raced all 2013. Uh, I raced five, five Adventure race, World Series, World Series races, and and the World Champs in 2013. Wow! The, the, there is a yeah. the, in in Costa Rica. Wow! And I met Urzi Iglesias there. I spoke with him. I told my I told him my 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 dream, and he was agreed to to join me and and work with me. To, to do it uh, for real. Wonderful. And that is how it all started. That's how it all started. In 2014, I raced with Ursi with his team in, I, in, in Gales, Wales. I, uh, Itera. Itera with James, yeah. That's the bit. <laughs> and and the, the yellow one, is my first race. It, my, it is for my first uh, expedition race in Patagonia, uh, Tierra Viva. Tierra Viva. Yeah, oh, wow. and well, uh, where, when we raced with, with Ursi in 2014, we decided to, to travel to Paraguay and, and show him the country and show him, you know, the, our most popular popular uh, spots for adventure races and he really likes it the, the country the people so we decided to start in 2015 yep. with a like a demonstration race yes. and for the first time in 2016 we were part of the world series it's wonderful and look at it now now it has grown to a very solid race with a good reputation. You've got the world champs waiting for you. So, I mean, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. Yes, yes, it, it, it was hard. It, it is a hard work, you know. We have a, a lot of trouble here to, to get the money to do the races yeah. because there is not much uh, no, uh, they they here we don't i don't how don't i don't know how to say it la, la gente no conoce las carreras de aventura the, uh, the people doesn't know adventure races here you know? yeah. so it's very difficult for us to to get the money to to do the race yeah. but we are working okay we we have the the strong, the strength that Urzi and I were, were uh, or we are uh, racers 
Yes. So we organize a race for the racers. That's and good. think in, in them or on, uh, try to think what do we want it? What do we want for a race? And try to do that. No, I mean, Gustavo, what you say there, it's, it's the key ingredient of, I think, successful races because you've raced yourself all over the world and you understand the problems you have from a racist perspective and what is the need um, that you need to be looked after and all the things. Plus now after several years of race organizing, you understand the difficulty to obviously put a race on and to organize a race. And it gives you a very good platform to put these two components together to host a very professional race. Um, obviously you guys, you are a great team and we're very excited about the future for you guys. Um, Gustavo, take us back. What is the meaning of your name? I mean, it's a beautiful name, Guarani. What, what, does it mean anything? Yes, Guarani, it's, it's our native people and it's our native language also. Like you speak African, we speak Guarani. Oh, you and, speak Guarani. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And there is uh, 80, 85 percent of the population talk Guarani, and maybe I don't know the percentage, but there is a lot of people that only speak Guarani. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that's how. That's why we we call it that the the race. And this is it's a popular. Uh, how you say the the, the, the Fabric? Yes. It's a, it's, it's a fabric that the Warani people uh, does. So when I come to the World Champs in 2022, I need to come and see where's that fabric. Yes, and we will give you some. Okay. And I hope to all the adventure racing teams, you will give them some yes. Warani yes. or that special fabric design. Yeah, it calls Nyanduti. Nyanduti. Okay. Well, we are really very, very excited about the future and, and your passion and your dreams uh, for, for what you want to do. Please, Gustavo, over the years, share with us so that our teams um, maybe get a bigger feeling. You mentioned now that it's very difficult to get financial assistance from your government. Is there anything else which was over the years a very difficult or hard year for you um, in your last four or five years of organizing? Anything you want to share with us? Yeah, well, the most difficult thing beside the money was to, to teach all the volunteers how they had to work. Okay. Because me and two or three other races only new adventure race outside our country. Okay. So it was like a, like a school the first time, but like a school, how they had to manage all the uh, transition area. Uh, they wanted also uh, always to uh, speak with the races and help them uh, go that way or do this or do that. <laughs> and we have to, to, to teach them the, how to how to how to work, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that, they want to sleep. Really they want to they also want to sleep at night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And the other thing that uh, we wanted to always to have long, long legs, very long legs. So the the, the people in the transition area have to stay two, three or four even four days in the same place. And that was really difficult also because we had to, to, to talk to the, to the volunteers and, and said, well, we need you from Monday to Friday. <laughs> you cannot be only one day or two days. Yes. So that, that's the, that was the most difficult thing. But now all, uh, all the volunteers wanted to do that. They put the, uh, how do you say vacaciones? Uh, they leave. Where, where, yeah, they holiday. When you are when when you are out of the work, how do you call that? Uh, your leave. Your um, okay. yeah. 
yeah, they, 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 like they address that, uh, that uh, <laughs> date to, to leave the, the work, you know. Uh, listen, your English are very good, hey? You think you're a little bit yeah, rusty, it, but it's... It is a little rusty because we don't speak English here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very good. I mean, I can't speak two words Spanish, so your English is very good. Well done, well done. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes, I understand. I truly understand that problem we have with volunteers and people. That is a challenge. Um, and tell us while you're speaking about the hardest part, what is the most beautiful part for you? Why are you keep on coming back and, and want to do more and more? What is your drive? I want the world to, kn to know about my country, to see my country and to, to know my, my people. You know? We are very, very friendly and we have a beautiful country. And everybody that came here to, to race can tell you that. The, the, the most beautiful, beautiful thing that we have here is our people. And there, there was a South African team in, I think, 2017 here. And- I think Thanosis. Yes, yes. And they won it. They won yeah, the race. They won the yes. race. They won of the- I think they have ranked tenth now in the world, and also they've also done now Echo Challenge. So yeah. Yes, and they ask uh, before the race start. They ask a few words in Spanish, like ice. They told the uh, yellow, and they ask for shower, but shower, they wanted to to. For example, when, when they came, when they arrived to a, to a house, they want the people to, to shower them with, with, I don't know, with house, you know, like just get wet. Yes. But when they use the word shower, for us is ducha, is, is the shower in the bathroom, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's so the shower, they, yeah. Yeah, it's shower in the bathroom, you know? And so they told them ducha is, Ducha in Spanish is shower in English, but the shower from, from the bathroom. So when they arrive to a house, they ask yellow y ducha. Yellow and ducha. Ice and shower. Ice and shower. Yeah, because it was very, very hot. That, that time we have 36, 36 degrees and, and the, the, the sun is very heavy, you know, very, very strong. So they asked for uh, yellow y ducha. And the, the owner of the house gave them ice that was their only ice in the, in the, in the house. And they, uh, they walked them inside the house to the bathroom <laughs> to have a shower. <laughs> and oh, they didn't understand why are inside the house, so uh, they they took them to the to the bathroom. Ah, okay, shower. <laughs> so but I'm that's sure that I'm sure they will never ever forget that. Yeah, yes. There is also a, a, another another story. Nick Gracie came here in 2015. Yes. Yeah. It was a very big storm, big big storm with lighting and everything and they went to a house in the middle of the night and the, and, and the owner of the house invited him to get inside he gave them a chicken soup he prepared the chicken soup. he killed a chicken and prepared the, <laughs> the, the, the soup for them killed the chicken and, okay yeah and a few hours later when the when the when the storm stopped he offered them money because the place that where they are they were going it was too far away it was like 100 kilometers away they they had to they ride the bicycle bicycle uh, to the next uh, transition area and he offered them money and Nick says i ha i had uh, how do you call the 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 money from from england uh, yeah, 
I, I have pounds in my pocket, and the, the man the man offered me Guaranis. That is the, the <laughs> is man here. So it, it, oh, shame! And you want to explain yeah. to the man, I don't want to take a yeah, yeah, I, I don't need money. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, you know what? When you speak to everyone, uh, that true passion and that true, true love of your people, you know, it's just like you exuberate it, you know, it just comes from within. And that's what makes it so special. Yeah, we, we really wanted want, uh, the races to feel our country. Of course. You know, course. Not, not just different. be here. Yeah. You have to feel it because it's not only see the, the landscapes or, or, oh. or, or race. You have to feel the, our people. You have to talk with them. So if you are uh, planning to come to Paraguay, try to speak a little Spanish. <laughs> it, it will be very beautiful for you to speak with our people yeah. and it will connect not, not you the volunteers. Hey? I mean not not the volunteers the guys who live in the country yes. who live there in yes. the wild no? yes and the villages and and people who will come to your race I mean the, the you will be drawn to to go through the villages and where you, the real people of the country is living um, and I think that is what makes it so special, you know, um, that is, that is unique and, and so beautiful of your country. Gustavo, as we are speaking about all these beautiful things, let's go and tell us then about your race for next year, because I know now already I can get the feeling. I know that the people will go there where the locals are staying. Um, tell us the race you are planning is for next year, July. And I presume it will be the normal expedition distance race fit into one week. Tell us more. What do we need to know about your race for next year? Well, I can't tell you much. You know that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, a, li a little bit of the, the, what everybody's allowed to know. Well, July is winter for us. Yeah. But in winter, in, in we, we only have like two or three uh, really cold weeks in Paraguay. Uh, when I said when I said cold, I mean four degrees, okay. five at degrees. Night. At night. At night. Yeah, maybe 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 a little less, but never below zero. You know. Okay. And but we have a lot of humidity. Hum humidity. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, you can feel the, the, the cold, you know. But there is, uh, in, in July this year, for example, we have days with 30 degrees. Oh. So it, it will be very difficult uh, to, to experiment uh, low, low temperatures in our race. Okay. In, the, in all the races that we have, five races we only have one time that we we had cold so you will feel the the paraguayan heat but then july uh, is a good month for racing because like you say it is heat but it's not it's still your winter so you are a little bit saved of that extreme humidity um in your exactly. summer months so it is exactly. actually still a good time for racing and July, August, and September are the the driest month in okay. the year. So okay. it's we don't want it you to to be the struggling with the mud and yeah. with the rain, yeah. uh, with the mosquitoes. <laughs> so we so try July to, to is that. good. What I it's, hear, July, July is, is very good. Very so good. teams very go good. and race. <laughs> Yes, very good, but it will be uh, almost the same kind of race yeah. at the the world championship. Yeah. The difference for us is that the world championship will be a, a difficult, a more difficult race. Yes. Okay. Because because we expect better teams. Yes. 
So uh, Uzi, that is a very good, uh, how do you call the man who used the, the map in the race? Uh, navigator. A navigator. He's a very good navigator and, and he put that in the race. Yeah. So you will need a lot of uh, concentration to find all the CPs and the transition area and everything, because we don't use we don't use the the, the road, roads or or we try to we try to put the the races in the in really wild, you know, in the yeah. into expedition a true expedition style race over yeah. the rivers, over the canyons, over the mountains. No, I understand. understand. Exactly. And there is another thing. In Paraguay, we have very uh, a few, just a few big cities. Yeah. There is more. There, there are more villages than cities. So you won't you won't find a big population or asphalt the tarmac uh, uh, roads or I don't know. A supermarket and then that kind of stuff. You will you will be racing in a very very wild uh, country. Beautiful. We all want that. Yes. <laughs> we know that. We know that. Okay. Because yeah. so always Haiti. Just one thing. But the transitions area. Yes. Are, the transitions area for us. Yes. It's very special. We need a, a place with bathroom, with roof, with a place to sleep. Yeah. So the transitions area are like five stars. You know? <laughs> so when you are racing, you have to suffer. But when you have the transition, when you have to do a transition, or when where you when you have to rest or when you sleep, yeah. that's the best place that we can find. Yes. What you can find, I think I agree with you very much there um, because I normally feel in the races if your transitions are good, we at least have water, a shelter, when it rains, it, it, it sort of pushes your team to go further in the race because they can recover, they can yeah. get dry, they can eat, they can sort of survive. So if the dream is in trouble, but your next transition is a haven, they, yeah. they, you know what I'm saying, is just give them a place where there is a doctor or they, like you said, there's warm water, they can eat warm food, they can sleep, they can shower, whatever, um, and, and a team will survive. Where if you don't have that and the transition is maybe out in the rain and it's much harder, it's easier for teams to pull out. But it's not always possible. We all know that. We know the route yes. doesn't always work out to, to give the teams that. But um, that's that's a very good point. You always try to give them the best place. Um, and we give we give we give them uh, food and fruits and, and and beverage in all the transitions area also. Yeah, fantastic. I want to do it. <laughs> I want to sign up. <laughs> Next uh, year you have to come. Hey? Next year you have to come and okay. see how uh, how we are putting together World Champs. Ah, that's, uh, we'll, we'll definitely speak about that. Um, Gustavo, tell us in your race for next year, let's go a little bit into the technical things. You are um, planning to have a rope section in the event or you're not sure yet no we always have ropes in our races uh, not very difficult maybe just for fun but we always have uh, a, i don't know maybe just one spot yeah but we always have has uh, have ropes we put a uh, how do you say natacion swimming we have we put swimming uh, uh, I think last year, and a, a very long swim, five kilometers, Woo! in a in a lake, Woo! in a lake, and they have to to find the CPs in in their land. Of course, you have to swim to the to the coast and then other coast and other coast uh, for five kilometers at night. It was very good. 
I, I was in a jacket. Yeah, I, I was in a jet ski. Yeah. Then the entire night. Oh. So I didn't sleep. I went uh, in the jet ski in the water the entire night. Oh. And they all survived but, it. They all survived. Yeah, they all survived. <laughs> they, they, some, some of them drink a lot of water, but they survived. <laughs> <laughs> Gustavo, speaking of water, so are you planning another swim? Maybe a one kilometer swim for next year? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Okay. But okay. we always, we always uh, talk, uh, talk, uh, talk to the to the races, and, and we we told them if we have a swimming or something special, you know. To prepare. To prepare. Yeah, yeah, to prepare. Um, Gustavo, and your kayaking, um, what sort of kayaks? What are you planning for kayaking for your race? Uh, sit on tops, plastic sit on tops. Uh, are you provide that? Is there any other specific gear you know now at this stage, or you except for a little bit bring weather conditions kind of all gear and bring ropes gear? That's all at this point. Nothing. Uh, no, different. no. There, there's. We we try to put uh, the the less uh, the less what we ask the better the race is yeah. for us yeah. you know so, so we put the the kayaks uh, food water and and the ropes yeah you have to bring your own gear for your harness and and well everything that you you need it but sometimes we put all the gear in the back and we give you the back in the rope section for example you know? so we don't want it to the, the 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 races to to suffer more that than they have to i know what you're saying i hear what you're saying and yeah it, it won't be nothing really uh, different from from the races that we have here uh, the 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 last years and in 2021 so if you want to know how is our race and how is the weather here or the people or how is how will be the 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 world championship you have to come in 2021 because it of course it will be a different race different course but but it, it will be very i had i don't know how to say it it's, it will be a, a very good place to practice. Yes. And I think, especially for a top competitive team or a team that always goes to race and they want to be, let's say, top 10 in the world for world champs, it always gives you a, a little bit of advantage if you understand the race organizer, you understand maybe the country. Uh, Stefan always actually says like the lay of the land. You understand the people, the mountains. You just have that feeling. So, yes. um, so guys, those who are listening, if you want to do the World Champs in 2022 and you already want to get a feeling of, of what's happening and how they do it, it's maybe a, a great opportunity to enter and go and participate next year in the event. Um, and it will definitely make the, the, the event for you a little bit more familiar. When you go there for the world champs um gustavo please tell us where is your hq i just uh, where do the teams fly into and where where are you sort of operating the race from yeah we always uh, ask the team to come to asuncion that is our capital of the country yeah. and it's, it's the biggest uh, airport that we have and if we start the race away from asuncion we always put the, all the races in, in buses and we go to the, to the start line. But Asuncion will be the uh, headquarters. We use five uh, star hotel to host the, the, the races, the racers. And Asuncion or, or Paraguay is very, very cheap. Okay. Imagine that you only have to pay like three, I, I said three hundred dollars for team per team for the entire race uh, to pay the hotel. 
Oh, wow. And, you and he said, babe. One, one or two nights before and the uh, nights afterwards and wonderful. So you, yeah. you, you fly into there, you stay then at that city, um, at the hotel, you can buy your food, um, your food shopping and get all yourself sorted out. You have your registration and your um, opening and all your administration things there. And then yeah, you all take the same place. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And then you take them out. And is that also the finish or do you normally finish at another place? We when we, we normally finish in another place. Sleep there if you arrive early. Okay. Okay. And, and then, then go all together again to the headquarters a hotel. And you have then your closing function there. Yes. Perfect. It sounds that's normally what we do. But but one time we we have a race 400 kilometers from Asuncion. Yeah. So the headquarters was there. So we we do all all the race around the headquarters there, uh, 400 kilometers from Asuncion. So the people from Argentina, for example, went directly to to that city okay. because it, okay. it was a, a frontier from for, with Argentina. But we don't know yet where we are going to do the World Championship. Or, or right. we know, but we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it sounds awesome to me. Um, I know that you guys know what you're doing. It's going to be a great race. Um, I, you know, we're all looking forward to you guys having a great 2021. And, of course, having one of the best World Championships in 22 ever. Um, and, and that is our only wish for, for any race director that you've put in so many years of love and dedication and dreams into, into the sport and that your events are just a great success. Um, and also for the teams, that it's a wonderful experience. So, um, Gustavo, before we finish, uh, one last question. I want to know that if there are um, volunteers who want to come and help you from around the world, I know you always have one or two coming, but I mean, they're welcome to contact you guys and come and help yes. you in a beautiful country. Yes, of course, of course. And if we have people that speak French, English, it will be better because here we don't have much people that, who speak uh, that language. And yes, we, we are, we, they are welcome. We, we will give them the, the hotel, the food, and everything they need here. Okay. No, so there you go, guys. If you, don't, if you can't uh, maybe race, and we have such an amazing volunteer community around the world, um, and we would like to extend you know, a warm welcome from all the race directors that they can come and sign up with these race directors and go and support them. And also in that way, assist the race director Maybe we get better and more group of um, experienced volunteers and they can go to all these different countries in the world. And also by then helping the race directors because they understand and they know what it's all about. Yeah, so, and, is and there anything very, else? Hmm? Yeah, it's, a very, it's a very good way to, to know the country also. Yeah. Yeah, but with, no, with, with no suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a little bit because they can't sleep too much. <laughs> yeah, they can't sleep too much. <laughs> uh, and they must be every time when they wake up in the middle of the night, they must just smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Gustavo, is there anything else about your race for next year you would like to tell us more? Have we missed anything? I think I need to mention. I think we do need to mention to to the races that. The, the way I feel and, and see your events is like, it's a very uh, rural race. You go into um, the country where you see the real people of this country, into their villages. And that is the feeling um, of, of this. It's not a first world country um, and it's safe and it's special. Is, is that correct? Yes, yes. It's uh, another thing that you have to know is Paraguay is one of the safest country in the world. We don't have earthquake, we don't have uh, 
how do you call that, uh, tornadoes or anything like that. Yes, we don't have a sea and we don't have big mountains, but I can assure you that you will climb a lot. <laughs> yes, I, I know. <laughs> And I, like I told you, it's, the safe, it's one of the safe, safest uh, countries in the world because, like I told you, our people is very kind, very, very kind. And we, don't, we, we didn't have any problem, uh, never, uh, with, the, with the racers or, or in, in the race, you know? So if you don't speak Spanish, you will you won't have any problem uh, at all you can ask cyanosis they they and the fact that they cannot speak spanish and they still you know won the race mean you know what sign language and uh and, and you can in many ways you can still get whatever information you can get from locals or people with a little bit of I understand what you say, it's not a problem. Yes. Gustavo, um, yes, guys at home, it's a wonderful, safe country. That's very important. It is beautiful. The people are amazing. It's affordable. Um, and that helps you if you're on a tight budget. Um, that is also a great thing that you know that the food and the things you buy in the country, you know, your money will go quite far, especially if you have pounds. <laughs> yes. yes. Pounds and dollars. Um, yes. Gustavo, we thank you from the bottom of our heart from AI World Series. For me personally, I'm very happy that I could have inspired you in uh, Africa to continue with adventure racing and eventually end up as one of the best racers in the world. Um, that, that I can see your passion is still there and I'm so excited about the future for you guys. Um, so yeah, from, from our side, we thank you for your dedication and hard work, um, to grow the sport in, in your own country and persevered. We know how hard it is, um, for a race director to year in and year out to continue and come back and find another venue and just, just keep on doing, doing it. So, um, we want to thank you from our side and yes. Uh, all the best for the future. And on that note, please, um, you can say a few words in Spanish to your to your local people, and then we will say ciao after that. Bueno, eh, para todos los que hablan español, les quiero invitar nuevamente a correr en nuestra carrera. Ustedes saben, los que ya corrieron, saben lo que, lo que les espera, saben que es una carrera muy buena, que los tratamos muy bien y saben que es una de las carreras más baratas del mundo también. Así que espero que en, en el 2022, cuando sea el Mundial, podamos decir que fue una carrera llena de eh, gente de todo el mundo, pero que la zona estuvo bien representada, ¿verdad? Así que prepárense, entrenen lo suficiente y los esperamos en el 2022. Um, I, I told them that they know that it's a very good race, it's a very cheap race, and we treat the racers like uh, they deserve. And well, it will be it will be a very good experience to race the the next year uh, race that we have here to practice and to be prepared for the world championship. And well, that we always are, we are always happy to have people from around the world here and to show them our country and our people. That's beautiful. On that note, we thank you. Good luck to you and Uchi and teams. I think we've covered it all. It's a wonderful destination. Another great race on the AO World Series calendar. Please go to the AO World Series website or go to the event uh, website directly. Find all the information 
and uh, sign up for your races for 2021. And on that note, I say ciao, God bless, see you again. Ciao, lady, and just one, just one thing to just one thing uh, to to say goodbye. There is a curious thing about Expedition Guarani. A lot of people repeat our race. Fantastic. There is a lot of people from around the world that want to race year and uh, every year, and that's that's not uh, that is a kind of rare. No, that is a sign that you organize a very good race, a solid race. You've got a good reputation. People would like to come back because they know what they are getting, and you should be very proud of that. Thank you, thank you. We are, we are. <laughs> And stay that proud. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Love to all of you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.